Decades ago, Wayne Newton was one of the most popular performers on the Las Vegas scene. Despite the success he's seen in his career, he's never been very good with money. Wayne started facing serious financial difficulties in the 1980s and is still struggling today. Join Facts First as we look at how Wayne Newton is doing after losing all his money. According to legend, Wayne Newton began singing professionally when he was only six. As an adult, he found massive success as an artist starting in the 1960s. Though Wayne is best known as a singer, he's also a multi-instrumentalist. In addition to the guitar, the crooner can play both the piano and the banjo. Some of the many hits that's helped put Wayne on the map include Daddy Don't You Walk So Fast and Red Roses for a Blue Lady. Given his stature in the realm of popular entertainment, one might imagine that Wayne is doing pretty well for himself today. Sadly, this isn't the case. In fact, the singer is totally broke. The reasons that Wayne finds himself in such dire financial straits today are multifaceted and many. For one thing, the singer has always turned a blind eye to the business side of his endeavors. Wayne has always been a great singer, but he's never been great at managing his finances. Because of this, he's left many important financial decisions over the years to people who didn't have his best interests at heart. Wayne not being interested in the business side of things might not have been quite as big of a problem if he didn't attempt to stretch his wings so far. The singer has constantly tried to branch out into other endeavors, including owning the Aladdin Hotel in Las Vegas. Around the time when Wayne attempted to take over the Aladdin is also around the time when he started having financial difficulties. It was the start of the 80s and the crooner was sick of working for other people. For the past decade plus, Wayne had been working for an entertainment company owned by Howard Hughes. In addition to being invested in aviation and Hollywood, Howard was also a big player in Las Vegas. He didn't treat Wayne poorly, but the singer still wanted to be his own man. Sadly, he had to rely on the dark forces of organized crime to gain his independence in Sin City. Wayne had financial ties to the mob. The first thing that came to topple the empire of Wayne Newton was the public realization that the crooner had mafia ties. The rumors were reported in the media and eventually came to light that there was plenty of truth to them. But that didn't stop Wayne from attempting to sue NBC News for libel. Wayne actually won the lawsuit initially, but appeals saw his initial $19 million prize whittled down to nothing once it was decided there was no evidence suggesting the rumors had been spread maliciously or on purpose. Wayne could have used the millions, as the 1980s saw the crooner's funds dwindle considerably. Owing money to the wrong people didn't work out well for the singer, and he was bankrupt by 1992. By the time Wayne filed for bankruptcy, he was around $20 million in debt to various parties. One of these was the IRS, with the agency alleging that the crooner owed hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes. Towards the end of the 90s, Wayne joined forces with fellow Las Vegas figurehead Tony Orlando, and the two opened up a venue together in the city. It went by the name The Talk of the Town. Both entertainers imagined they'd be able to pull in hefty crowds, as there were 2,100 seats. Sadly, there were generally well under a 1,000 people in attendance once the venue opened its doors. Pretty soon, Wayne and Tony realized they weren't making enough money to pay their lease, which totaled $2 million. This financial situation was bad enough for the business partners, but their relationship soured even more when it was discovered that Wayne had placed recording devices in a private room that he and Tony shared. Tony's son discovered the recording devices, and Tony was understandable upset. Orlando broke off things with Wayne after he discovered he was being spied on. Wayne took over their venue for himself. By the turn of the millennium, the name was changed to the Wayne Newton Theater. The new millennium also saw Wayne having increased troubles with the IRS, with the amount he owed in taxes increasing all the time. How Wayne Newton's House Became a Museum in 2001, Wayne Newton became embroiled in a scheme that he thought would end his financial difficulties. That scheme saw the crooner partnered with a company called CSD to turn his home into a museum and tourist site similar to Elvis Presley's Graceland. The company put around $70 million into the project, with $50 going towards the renovation of Wayne's home into a museum and the other $20 million going directly into his pockets. 
In addition to being a museum, the tourist site would include a car wash and a dinner theater. When Wayne made this deal with CSD, there was some understanding that the crooner was eventually going to move out of the property. However, several years after the deal had been put in place, it began to appear he had no intention of doing so. All the while, the money that he owed in other places kept piling up. The IRS sued him in 2005 after it was determined he owed them too much money. Two years later, he made headlines for the wrong reasons when he abandoned his private jet at Oakland International Airport. The jet needed repairs that Wayne didn't have the money to fund, so all he could do was leave the decaying piece of machinery there for the time being. Eventually, he was able to pay to have it disassembled and shipped to his home, where he had it put back together in his backyard. 2009 saw Wayne sued for yet another financial reason, this time being he had skipped the bill on several bales of hay. Wayne Newton's poor financial decisions over the years have affected not only himself, but the many animals he keeps on his property. He has an apparent love for living creatures, but you wouldn't know it based on the way he takes care of them. It seems Wayne likes to bite off more than he can chew when it comes to taking wild animals into his care. In addition to numerous horses, Wayne's property has also been home to monkeys, sloths, exotic birds, and other creatures. His poor finances have made it so he's always had a hard time caring for the animals he purchases. Wayne is still facing financial difficulties today. Wayne was sued in 2010, this time by a former friend who alleged he'd let the crooner borrow several millions. It got to the point where Wayne was forced to sell his home, which came as pretty bad news to the company he had agreed to turn it into a museum with. Thankfully, CSD stepped in to save the day. They took over the property and even let Wayne live there for the time being. But that doesn't mean he was in clear waters financially. CSD eventually managed to turn Wayne Newton's home into a museum, though tours stopped operating in 2018 for undisclosed reasons. In 2020, around the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, Wayne appeared in a television spot for Caesars Palace. As soon as the city opened back up after social distancing, Wayne went back to performing. This comes in spite of the fact that he suffered a back injury in 2021 that called his future on the stage into question. Though Wayne may be broke, he still has his family. He's been married two times. His first wife was Elaine Okamura, whom he was with from 1968 to 85. In 94, he married second wife Kathleen McCrone, and they're still together today. Wayne has one daughter from each of his two marriages. Now it's time to hear from you. Did you know Wayne Newton had ties to the mob and that he really likes exotic animals? Let us know in the comments section below.